Depression by Jimi Hendrix is originally played in a tuning that is one half step down from standard tuning, but I've got my guitar here in standard tuning so that you don't have to retune in order to learn with me here. But if you want to play along with the recordings of Jimi Hendrix, you would have to take your tuning and drop it all uh, one half step tuning. Uh, so basically it would put the guitar into E flat. Um, aside from that, uh, it's also worth noting that I'm not showing you 100% precisely the way that Jimi Hendrix plays this. I'm playing you a version that I feel is uh, a bit more adapted to an acoustic guitar, uh, but there is a lot of overlap behind or between what I'm showing you here and the way that Jimi Hendrix actually plays it. So, um, the intro to the song is happening with two chromatic walk-ups. Uh, beginning on the five string and then moving to the four string. That walk up is five string five fret to five string six fret to five string seven fret. And then on the four string, five fret, six fret, seven fret, the same thing just on the four string. Um, but since that kind of sounds thin on an acoustic guitar, what I do is I tend to play them as bar, as not bar chords, but as power chords. So I've got my first finger on the five string five fret and my pinky finger or my ring finger on the 4 string 7th fret to make a power chord and then I just move that shape up three times up one fret each and then I almost do the same thing uh, for the 4th fret except instead of just barring or instead of just fretting the 4th string and 3th string like 1st finger on the 4th string 5th fret and ring finger on the 3th string 7th fret I let my first finger grab the five string on the five fret as well. So I've actually got a three finger bar going on right there. And then I play that uh, up uh, three frets. So five fret, six fret, seven fret. So on the first round though, it's important to know that you only want the five and the four strings ringing out. And then the second round, you can have five, four, and three ringing out if you're doing this bar of the five and four strings with your first finger. After that, it then goes into that riff that you know. The way that I make this and what I rely on uh, to get that feel and get that sound pushed through is basically a drone of the open five string. Uh, I've got my thumb just kind of resting across the top of the guitar right there, and I'm actually grabbing the 6th string on the 5th fret. So I've got an A there, then I've got the 5th string, which is an A, and then I reach around and I grab the pinky, or with my pinky, the 4th string 7th fret. So I've got three A's in a row. And then the nuance will be happening between my pinky finger on the 4 string 7 fret and my first finger on the 4 string 5 fret. So I keep my five, uh, I keep my first finger on the 5 fret of the 4 string and then I alternate between pinky down on the 7 fret of the 4 string to pinky up off the 4 string to where my first finger is. So down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And with my strumming hand, I'm basically just doing a chunky down, up, 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 down, up. And sometimes you might want to pick your pinky finger back up, like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. And that's the feel inside of that A vamp. And then out of that vamp, it moves into uh, this motion. And that motion is basically your friend over each chord that happens in the song. It will be um, running from the root up to the third of the chord and then hitting the five of the chord. So we've got six string, five fret from A. Put down your ring finger or pinky finger on the six string, seven fret to then slide it to the 6th string 9th fret. That's a, uh, a C-sharp, which is the 3rd of an A, and then the 5 of an A, which is the E, uh, the 5th string 7th fret. So that's what happens over the A chord. And then we're going to go to the G chord and 
do the exact same thing. So for the G chord, I tend to hit like a power G chord, first finger on the sixth string three fret, pinky finger or ring finger on the five string five fret, but hit it once and then do that same slide up to, uh, now we're moving from the sixth string five fret to the sixth string seven fret, and then five string five fret with your first finger. So we've got the A to the G, and then whenever we put our first finger on the five string five fret, we'll hit it again because that next note is the, uh, or where we've got our first finger on the five string five fret is the next note for the next walk up, which will be uh, the same original walk up from the beginning of the song, D, D sharp, E, or D, E flat, D. E. Uh, and you can do that walk up just like that uh, power chord walk up as well. So you've got the A chord, to the G chord, to the D, then back to the vamp. Repeat. Uh, the third time, it moves to an E chord. So you can put your first finger down on the five string two fret and plug the open six and where you've got your first finger for that kind of first big note, but then you immediately need to move with your ring finger to the six string two fret to slide it to the six string four fret because we're doing the same pattern that we did in each chord. So six string four fret to the five string five, uh, five string two fret. Then we'll go to the G chord, repeat that same pattern. So G chord to slide with your ring finger from the six string five fret to the six string seven fret, and then five string five fret. Whenever we get to this D chord, I, I tend to fill it out with more of, again, that power chord feel. Um, and it moves from the D chord to a C chord to a G chord. And I'll tell you about the count here in just a second, but just so that you see the chords, it's the D power chord falls down to a C power chord. That's first finger on the five string three fret, pinky finger on the four string, uh, first finger on the five string three fret, pinky finger on the four string five fret to a G chord, which I uh, leave my pinky finger where it's at on the four string five fret, put my first finger down on the six string three fret, and then add my ring in between on the five string five fret. So we're moving from a D to a C to a G. All right, so about the count, this is where the count gets weird. The entire song is basically in threes, like one, two, three, 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 one, two, so the, basically the whole thing's in threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But right here is where it changes a little bit. You've got one count of basically a one, two, three on the D out of this one, two, three. And then you're gonna go one, two, a count of one, two. And after that two count is where you fall down to the C. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. You've got one set of three on the C chord and then immediately moves to the G chord where it's got a count of four. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then it comes right back up to the A for one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's you're right there back at the beginning. Uh, so it goes back to that, that A chord for the same box slide that we did down to the G slide, uh, G chord for the same box slide, and then repeats the intro of chromatic walk up from the D up to the G on the five string, uh, five fret, six fret, seven fret, to the four string, five fret, six fret, seven fret, or in the power chord formation. There was one more thing that I wanted to mention about this. What was it? Oh, that whenever we get into, whenever we get into after the, after the change of E to the G chord, and we get to this weird count of the D, 
I think the Jimi Hendrix probably is actually alternating between like a D note and a C note, but I tend to just just let my finger pull off to the open five string in the D chord, like hit the power chord, pull off with your first finger, put your first finger right back down and be hitting at the same time. And then in the C chord, to the G chord, but it, with the G chord your first finger would be on the six string th three fret and you'd be pulling off to six string open and going right back down to the six string three fret. Uh, to get that pulse feel. I think maybe Hendrix is actually going uh, C to a B and then G to a F sharp. But to my ears, like the pulse of that feel is really what matters. And you can achieve that same thing by just doing the little hit and pull off with your first finger against the five string to the three string and then again, uh, it goes back and then back into the van. So hopefully that is an approach that you can use to take Manic Depression by um, Jimi Hendrix. I blanked there for a second. Manic Depression by Jimi Hendrix and put it on an acoustic guitar. Uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to approach the song.